Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some showers and thunderstorms across the southeast of Queensland, some of which could potentially be severe on Wednesday afternoon and we're also going to be talking about a rainfall event across south central Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. We'll also take a look at the tropical forecast as well and all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you're ever new to the channel please consider subscribing, your support lately has been greatly appreciated and we're on our way to hit 20,000 by the end of the year. So starting things off over in the southeast of Queensland. You can already start to see with the temperature observations. Temperatures are starting to climb quite rapidly. It's going to be a warm one there and you've got a warm couple of days ahead of it. Uh, up into the mid-30s today for Brisbane, even the mid to high 30s for parts of more central Queensland and even into the low 40s around Mount Isa from a developing low pressure trough that's going to extend through the central towards the southeastern part of the state and that's what's going to be promoting those thunderstorms. Not so much today but definitely into tomorrow. So let's break, that, break down that forecast for you right now. Now, so we're starting things off with today. There is a light chance of thunderstorms throughout the course of today, especially out towards Rolston, uh, Tarum, uh, outside of Roma and Charleville. There are some thunderstorm chances out there throughout the course of today, but they are pretty remote at this time. And if thunderstorms do form out there, they will be very hit and miss, very sporadic, and it is more likely than not that they will miss certain locations and certainly not expecting any good rainfall out there either. However, we could be seeing one or two good drops out sort of uh, Tarum and Roma sort of way, especially into the evening hours of tonight there could be a couple of heavy showers out there but again tonight we're not expecting severe thunderstorms there is only the very weak chance of some non-severe thunderstorms out there and even out towards the sunshine coast as well there could be a few thunderstorms there tonight but again i'm not really betting the house on some significant thunderstorms over there i'm giving thunderstorms probably about a 10 to 15 percent chance of firing up within five kilometers of a particular location at any point along the sunshine coast so the chances are really low throughout the course of today but however they will be increasing for Tuesday. Take a look at this. We're going to see a round of thunderstorms early on Tuesday morning and then by Tuesday early afternoon we're going to see a burst of thunderstorms fire up around Ipswich, Toowoomba and into the southeast of Brisbane. Uh, out towards Bow Desert, that sort of area and even down towards the Gold Coast we're going to see a round of thunderstorms fire up in that area. Now, these thunderstorms do really have my attention. I mean, take a look at this here. You can see throughout the course of today, they do continue to fire up. In, but, and by around 4 p.m., we're going to see a pretty wide expanse of potentially uh, supercellular thunderstorms starting to move towards the Sunshine Coast. Uh, there is the chance of supercells, as I just mentioned. I'm giving the chance of supercells tomorrow at probably about 15 to 30%. Not overly high and certainly not nothing to really panic about right now. But there is certainly the chance the environment is going to be very favorable for thunderstorms to fire up. And there's going to be a lot of energy energy available in the atmosphere for said thunderstorms to fire up. If thunderstorms do go severe, it is most likely going to be for isolated pockets of heavy rainfall, of straight line damaging winds, and the chance of some medium-sized hailstones as well. But again, I'm not expecting pandemonium on Tuesday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, so there really isn't anything worth worrying about. And this is a stock standard thunderstorm event for uh, Queensland spring. This normally happens a couple of months from now in towards uh, late November and early December. So we are getting this thunderstorm event a little bit earlier on than normal. But again, this is stock standard weather for this time of the year. It's nothing out of the ordinary. So again, it really isn't much to be worth worrying about. Later on Tuesday night, these thunderstorms will creep further up the Sunshine Coast, up towards Harvey Bay and Bundaberg. A couple of showers are possible there, but they should die out before they get to the coastline. And Fraser Island will probably see the last of the drops of rainfall for Tuesday afternoon before the thunderstorms peak out by late Tuesday evening. Now, throughout the course of Wednesday, which definitely has my attention for the most significant chance of thunderstorms, you can see a trough line developing along the Queensland coastline. That's being supported by uh, pretty fresh and cool south uh, easterly winds that are streaming in from the Tasman Sea. Now, this is interesting because it's going to reduce the chance of significant thunderstorms across the immediate corner of southeastern Queensland. However, by Wednesday afternoon, with a developing trough line, that should kind of cancel things out. And we're going to see a widespread expanse of thunderstorms developing across the southeastern corner of Queensland. Now what this means is that the highest chance of severe thunderstorms and supercell thunderstorms at that which do actually have a really good chance of de developing on Wednesday they're most likely going to be occurring inland. We'll still see pulse thunderstorms with a chance to go supercellular along the Queensland coastline however that should remain north of Harvey Bay. We'll also see the chance of thunderstorms from more sort of rainfall 
uh, events occurring across the southeast of Queensland. I'm not expecting uh, powerful severe thunderstorms around the Brisbane or Gold, Co Gold Coast area. Throughout the course of Wednesday, I reckon the chance of said severe thunderstorms will be kept inland. And you can see it here on the forecast. The heavy lightning strikes are expected to remain further inland, where the more sort of moderate to locally heavy rainfall uh, is more concentrated down towards the southeast of Queensland. And I'm not saying that we're not expecting significant severe weather along the southeast of Queensland throughout the course of Wednesday. There's certainly the chance of some very heavy rainfall, potentially up towards 50 or 60 millimetres of the stuff around the scenic rim and Mount Tambourine. There could be some very heavy rainfall down there. However, I reckon the chance of severe thunderstorms is going to be kept further on inland towards the dry line where these thunderstorms are going to be firing up along. And you can see uh, thunderstorms are going to be making the most of the warm weather and the high levels of humidity, especially out into more central parts of Queensland, out towards Emerald and further Further up into the Capricorna district around Ogmore and Rockhampton, there's going to be some good thunderstorm uh, environments for them there. So they will be making the most of it and it is going to bring hopefully some much needed rainfall to certain locations. But again, we'll break this down in just a couple of minutes, but rainfall, I'm not expecting too much fit for a lot of locations. So just before we do get to the rainfall, we'll see how they finish off on Wednesday. You can see really big uh, thunderstorms by about sunset 4 or 5 p.m. on Wednesday. This is really quite concerning actually out towards Chinchilla, Taroo. Rolleston, Dingo, Biloela, uh, even out towards Kingaroy, closer to the coastline, there are going to be some big thunderstorms out there. And it's kind of along the line that runs up the road between St. George up to about Emerald and Claremont. I'm not 100% sure what that road is, and that's quite bad of me. I should really know my Queensland geography by now. But anywhere along this road and further towards the east, if someone could name it in the comment section down below, that'd be much appreciated. The one that runs from St. George through Roma up towards Emerald and Claremont, uh, anywhere towards the east of that, some pretty significant thunderstorms are possible and thunderstorms will extend far up the coastline as well right outside towards Townsville and Cardwell there's a chance of some thunderstorms but again they will be less severe out there now let's talk about the rainfall factor of this forecast here. You can see some heavy showers and the chance of thunderstorms, potentially severe ones as well, later on Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening, continuing into early Thursday morning along the southeast of Queensland. And this does mean that they're going to see some pretty high rainfall accumulations, which you can see here on the rainfall forecast. So just in that 36-hour period from Wednesday morning to Thursday afternoon, you can see some substantial rainfall observations from heavy showers that are expected to materialise around the Gold Coast and Brisbane, potentially up to 50 or 60 millimetres of the stuff here and maybe even more for one or two locations. Now that's quite concerning indeed. There's certainly this part of southeastern Queensland, especially into the more mountainous areas and the further south you go into the northeast of New South Wales, they don't really need any more rainfall and certainly not 60 millimetres of it in six hours, which is what the forecast is suggesting at this time. But heavy showers, especially later on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning, because they will be more widespread, look to bring a much higher degree of rainfall to the southeast of Queensland and also a much higher degree of certainty surrounding said rainfall forecast. So that is very interesting indeed. Brisbane and the Gold Coast looking at some pretty substantial rainfall accumulations throughout Wednesday and Thursday. The rainfall will also creep up the Sunshine Coast as well with some heavy falls possible on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday, but not really making it farther north than about uh, Noosa. Definitely not up towards Harvey Bay. The rainfall will be pretty light up there. But uh, Maroochydore and then down towards Caloundra uh, and Redcliffe in the northern parts of Brisbane could also receive some pretty good rainfall accumulations as well. So we will keep a close eye on things. Tuesday, uh, I mean, we're kind of going back in time here. It's a bit of a higgledy bickledy forecast, but Tuesday, the rainfall is going to be very hit and miss. Where the thunderstorms do pass over, we're expecting some pretty substantial rainfall accumulations, potentially 50 or 60 millimetres of the stuff. But the rainfall is just going to be too uncertain and too widespread to really put a number on things. And the majority of locations are going to miss out on the rainfall on Tuesday. However, back to Wednesday and Thursday, especially Wednesday afternoon and into Thursday morning, just over that 24-hour period, some big rainfall accumulations are possible with thunderstorms, especially if we do get supercell thunderstorms, which look likely outside of Tarum and Dingo, we could be seeing rainfall accumulations above 100 millimetres over that period for very isolated and very specific locations, depending on where the thundercells thunder pass over. However, again, for locations that uh, fail to miss out on thunderstorms, the rainfall will be closer to zero or zero itself. Uh, the rainfall will still be pretty hit in this and it will get further 
uh, the, uh, the uncertainty of the rainfall will increase as you get further north, and I'm expecting rainfall to be very hit and miss once you get north of Claremont and up towards Charters Towers. There's really going to be more places that miss out than places that get actual rainfall. And closer to the coastline as well, where the thunderstorms will peter out. I mean, uh, disregard Bundaberg and Agnes Water, they're still expecting a couple of drops, but Rockhampton, Ogmore, and Mackay, really not expecting anything in the way of rainfall, and I would not be betting uh, on rainfall falling for those locations, which is unfortunate because they really do need the rainfall. Now the hazards with supercell thunderstorms, and I do have to go over this, uh, we're definitely talking about damaging winds and heavy rainfall for these thunderstorms, uh, regardless of what happens if they do go supercellular. But if they do go supercellular and we do see supercell thunderstorms marching four locations on Wednesday afternoon, which looks pretty likely at this stage, at least a 50% chance of occurring, then we start to talk about large hailstones and potentially tornadoes as well. Uh, I think it's just too early on in the season to have significant long track tornadoes if they do form they're going to be very weak and again the chances of that happening are very small at this time but I do still have to outline it uh, I know a lot of people are probably screaming at me that tornadoes are not an Australian thing well we do see a couple every single year especially across Queensland and New South Wales and the amount of instability in the atmosphere that we're seeing on Wednesday afternoon does present a risk for tornadoes I'm just saying that the risk right now is very very low and they're not worth worrying about at all the Bureau of Meteorology will keep you updated on the latest warnings so head over to their page on Wednesday afternoon and if thunderstorms do get really nasty there will be a Wednesday evening update on this channel so make sure you are subscribed it is information that you do not want to miss out on any questions or comments please do leave them in the comment section down below especially if I've left anything unanswered or left you unsure of anything I'd be more than happy to help out down there now in terms of rainfall heading further on into the forecast period you can see on Thursday onwards still a couple of showers across the southeast of Queensland and then later on this weekend we have a couple of showers and thunderstorms expected to fire up along a trough line that's extending through Queensland Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. Now we could be seeing an isolated pockets of heavy rainfall on Sunday afternoon from a bit of a thunderstorm line that's expected to fire up across south central Queensland between uh, Windera across towards Charleville and then Lightning Ridge and Moree in the northeast of New South Wales and some more moderate rainfall accumulations are possible outside of Dubbo, Tamworth and then Tyree uh, like I said along the New South Wales coastline. Now the forecast of this little weather event here which looks to be a bit of a frontal system blowing through providing some thunderstorms and moisture to central parts of New South Wales and Queensland. It looks a little bit uncertain at this time, so I'm not going to make too much in the way of comments on this weather system, uh, but it has been on the forecast for the last couple of days, and you can see here between Saturday and Monday over that three-day forecast period, there are some relatively decent rainfall accumulations on the cards, up towards 50 millimetres of rainfall outside of Moree, and then down towards Tamworth. I would take this forecast, however, with a pretty heavy pinch of salt. The GFS is calling for it, which is another forecast model. They're calling for some rainfall accumulations, and a similar story with the Axis. G3, but just considering how different the locations, I mean, you can see the Eastern Dev calling for the bulk of the rainfall where the cursor is now, and then the GFS calling for it up here, and the Axis G3 calling for it way over here in the west of New South Wales, there is still a lot of uncertainty with this forecast, so I would not be holding out for significant rainfall accumulations across New South Wales and Queensland on uh, this weekend. I just think it is a little bit uncertain at this time, but just taking a look at the forecast again, you can see the chance of thunderstorms really does look to be there. And if we take a look at convective available potential energy from the Eastern Air forecast, you can see that there really is the chance and there's going to be available energy in the atmosphere for substantial thunderstorms. However, not as much available energy as we're going to be seeing on Wednesday. We really do have a thunderstorm outbreak in our hands on Wednesday afternoon. There's going to be a lot of instability in the atmosphere. And again, there's more talk for tomorrow forecast update where I'll have the latest information and I'll be telling you exactly what is expected for Wednesday. It's certainly something that you want to be sticking around for so once again make sure you are subscribed. In terms of rainfall accumulations uh, cumulatively over the next 10 days for the southeast of Queensland and into the north of New South Wales you can see some pretty substantial falls are possible from these thunderstorms. Like I said that's 70 millimeters or so from the thunderstorms on Wednesday night and Thursday morning around Brisbane and the Gold Coast and some good accumulations into the northeast of New South Wales. So overall for the most part, provided we don't see major flash flooding or something like that from potentially severe thunderstorms, which is a chance on Wednesday into the parts of Queensland, especially already saturated parts along the southeast of Queensland. Uh, it all looks pretty good in terms of this rainfall forecast. It's rainfall that they really do need across this part of Australia. So it will be absolutely great to see, especially out towards Charleville and Roma. They do desperately need some rainfall out there and even up towards Rockhampton. Uh, and Mackay as well in the Capricorn district. I've been told in the comments that they really need some rainfall up there as well. 
that's enough talk on thunderstorms. I'm just going to give a brief tropical forecast to close out this video right now. You can see 10-day rainfall accumulation still looking pretty healthy across parts of the um, North Australia, if we can, can figure out how to get the forecast up. But you can see rainfall really starting to pile on now up in WA and into parts of the Northern Territory as well. It looks like the uh, thunderstorms are really starting to become quite consistent up there. Uh, so that is fantastic to see. And let me know how it's going over in Darwin as well, especially with some of the thunderstorms that are firing up there on a consistent basis. Overnight, we've had accumulations up to 50 millimetres across parts of the Kimberley region of WA and into the Northern Territory as well. So some good accumulations are already starting to pile on and it certainly looks like the wet season is about to kick itself into high gear for those locations, which is fantastic to see for rain and storm lovers. However, far, uh, for far north Queensland, it looks to be a little bit drier. It's not often where you see far north Queensland being one of the drier spots across the Queensland coastline and that certainly is the case over the next 10 days. Rainfall is still remaining pretty dry up there and pretty hard to find, especially as we go deeper into October. So some rainfall is only just around the corner, but they really do need some pretty soon because as I've been advised as well through the comment section, they are on water restrictions in some locations of far north Queensland, and it is starting to get uncomfortably dry up there. So the rainfall really, uh, a lot of people hoping for its return. However, still some enjoying the dry, warm weather. And speaking of warm weather, just to close out this video, let's take a look at the temperature forecast across parts of WA and the Northern Territory. It's going to be a warm one across WA, going up to 25 for per today which is quite warm for this time of the year and it's only going to get warmer as well throughout the course of this week with temperatures into the high 30s and low 40s extending into the gold fields and widespread across the Pilbara and the Kimberley region and extending across into the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland on tomorrow. Also some warm temperatures expected on Wednesday as a cold front moves through into parts of South Australia and Western Australia. Thursday it's going to be warmer still as well as a west coast trough slowly develops and temperatures expected to go into the high 20s and early 30s for the first time this summer season which is great to see. Warm temperature lovers are really going to be rubbing their hands at this. But a couple more weeks of cool weather certainly would not go astray for Perth. I'm certainly not going to miss... Uh, I'm certainly going to miss the cool, uh, wetter weather that we do have in winter. It's going to be warm as well throughout the uh, foreseeable future. Now it looks like the wet season heat has truly st uh, stuck itself around now for the Pilbara. You can see temperatures consistently into the early 40s, now into the mid 40s later on into October. Some very warm temperatures expected into the early parts of next fortnight. You can see into uh, parts of South Australia temperatures up towards 44, even 45 degrees Celsius. It's going to get quite warm there quite quickly. So for those of you in remote desert communities or travel through there I'd advise yourself to get into a cooler location if you are traveling through there or unless you do really enjoy the heat for some uh, reason but it is about to get uncomfortably hot across parts of Central Australia anyway so it is all that I have time for today if you have enjoyed this forecast update then please do leave a like and if I have left anything unanswered then please do let me know in the comment section down below that is all for me today a special shout out to the channel sponsors the names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them so again their support is much appreciated but that is all for me today and I'll catch you all next storm goodbye